Hello and welcome to the IDEM Interactions. We have a very special guest with us today, the one and only Tista Settlewad. Tista, pleasure, to pleasure to be here. Well, of course, you know, you have gone through a lot, you have refound your freedom. And one, one thing that I have always noticed that you know that uh, wherever you are, you always keep yourself very active. Uh, you do multiple things. I mean, uh, throughout the Gujarat saga, starting from the 2002 riots and the cases, Naroda Patia, Bilkis Banu, you have found time to kind of write consistently, engage with words and take up topics like Gandhi. But then I am told that you are writing your jail diary now. So let, tell us something about that. Yeah, well, uh, I think one of the things that has kept me going uh, all these years, particularly the kind of work one does, you've done it brilliantly also in terms of your writing, but I've engaged with it at a different level with victims and survivors and the legal system, is that it's a very depressive area. So uh, one thing I've always found is that work gives me a lot of uh, release okay. from depression and secondly so working with schools coach education has always been there but uh, yes uh, jail is never a nice place to be and the loss of dignity and autonomy is, is very difficult to communicate and describe to somebody who's you know not been there but yeah one of the things I was very very uh, obsessive about was to find quiet spaces within the jail to battle to kind of get a piece of paper and a pen to be able to write, to be able to read. I used to get about five or six books a day, a week. And uh, uh, I, I managed to write something like 1800 to 3000 words every day. My God, that's uh, a lot. We yeah, even, yeah. I mean, sometimes it was a bit less, but I tried to do that because I found it kept me sane. It kept me not less depressed, less... Uh, you know, you have to have a routine also because otherwise to, 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 to battle uh, life there, you have to have a routine and all and this, this helped. What also helped was also my receiving 2700 letters my when I was in jail, which was like a huge uh, boost. I mean, there were letters from uh, the Adivasi women uh, we, uh, who are our leaders, All India Union of Forest Working People, etc. So all of this kept you going. But yes, I'm working on that diary. I'm hoping that it's out soon. You must have been used to the computer for a very long time. So, but how how easy or difficult was it to adjust to writing? Actually, I've always loved to keep writing, even with the use of computer, you know. So, I've got this obsessive habit, if, uh, maybe it's an old journalist habit or uh, old uh, law Taking student notes. or history. Yeah, yeah. Even if I'm uh, going to be recording something, I will take notes. I will take obsessive notes. Any seminar, any discussion, I'll never be away from a pen and a paper. So that I think kept, of course, my writing has gone worse, all of that, but... But you can make out. Yeah, yeah. And then my, I, help, I took my colleagues' help to transcribe all of that. So that is already there as a base uh, writing and then I'm going to add some bits to it. Yeah. How difficult or easy was it to get pen and paper in the jail? Not easy, not easy. There's something that they, uh, you know, people have asked me how I was treated. I was not obviously maltreated in any way, no physical mis mistreatment at all. But there was a surveillance, suspicion, because I think people knew which case I was in and why I was in. But there was no overt hostility. But I was very fearful in the beginning about my physical security because some of the uh, perpetrators of 2002 were in the men's jail, etc. So I figured, my lawyers also mentioned this in court, but I figured that the best way was to be live like a normal woman prisoner. So okay. in a barrack with other women, 30 other women, children, try to get anonymity rather than uh, visibility is how I function. So I, I requested pen and paper immediately. I didn't get it for a long time. Then one matron helped me with a pen. Somebody got me a pad. And then after sort of my lawyers putting in one or two applications, I started getting a spiral diary every week or two weeks, okay. which is what I filled. Right, right, right. So, uh, you said that you, you, you preferred anonymity. Uh... Because, you know, you're living in a hostile atmosphere where high functionaries of the state have somehow singled you out for being doing whatever one believes to be the cause of public justice. Now, the system therefore is there in its place. Um, you don't want to draw unnecessary attention on yourself because you are in their quote-unquote in their hands. Yeah. You're worried about your health, you you're worried about everything. Fortunately, nothing untoward happened at all. I was okay, but you're worried. I mean, you're a human being. You know? 
But you said there was no physical. No, uh, not at all. Not but at then all. Uh, the ATS did uh, attack you. No, no, that was once I was in jail. But the, the manner in which I was picked up, brutalized, they entered my home without a warrant, did not show me the FIR, were physically violent with me, two males, one woman. All that is the subject matter of my complaint uh, in the Santa Cruz police station where I live. And also, I mentioned this to the demand magistrate, which is why now court inquiry is going on. There's an ongoing court inquiry. Uh, into ATS behavior. No, basically the point is, you know, uh, we, of course we had uh, protest meetings here in Trivandrum as well when uh, you were picked up. And in the first couple of days we did not get any news yeah. out. And there was this worst uh, fear, not apprehension, uh, that uh, you may be facing the same fate as Sanjeev Bhatt. No, see, it's not just a question of uh, what fate you face. I mean, for me the most frightening was that journey, car journey from Bombay to Ahmedabad, no? Now, fortunately, one asserted oneself, so uh, I, I, two colleagues came along with me. But otherwise, if I were to travel alone in their car, with just 11 or 12 ATS personnel, then I was not thinking of the case you mentioned, I was thinking of so many of the extrajudicial killings. You know, you think of anything. Right, right. So all that goes through your mind, and then you just realize you have to be grounded and uh, calm, and yet not let go of your rights. And my, I had an excellent legal team. And my, that's what my family was, of course, very supportive. But my legal team fought every inch of the way. Right. And I think that made a huge difference, whether it was at the demand magistrate's level or the high court level or the Supreme Court level. They just put all the facts out there. And facts, nothing, no hyperbole. And I think that helped. You are saying that you get, got this uh, amazing quantum of letters. I mean, can you tell us something? Give oh, us some, I mean, some I never expected it, and uh, it, it was amazing because this friends, family, and my comrades in the Adivasi Union, they were also. I mean, actually, what where was, is your Adivasi Union? It is in Gujarat, I know, but then no, it's actually it's got allied organizations who are part of its yeah. allyship in Gujarat. Yeah. Its main membership comes from uh, Sonbhadra, Eastern UP. Okay. Jharkhand, Bangal, okay. uh, Orissa, the, the core areas. Yeah, core and yeah, core areas, and of course, it's trying to expand, but it has fifty-eight thousand members, and uh, <coughs> uh, so I've been associated with them since twenty fifteen closely, and they were um, they. I mean, we got Sokalo Didi Gond and Nevada Rana and Rajkumari Ji, who are the leadership, and they wanted some of us on their board and elected officials. So one or two of us are also vice presidents of the union. So for me, it was a completely new world and perspective and I got associated with them and the whole battle for forest rights and all that. So the, my arrest and my picking up was also a message that the state wanted to send that, you know, if we can pick her up, we can do this to anybody. Right. So there was a lot of perturbation in the union and all the Gao Gao me, all the leadership was very worried. So they held meetings and they had consultations and then they called a meeting and many people from UP and Jharkhand and <coughs> Bundel Khan landed up. And they said, what can we do at this point? The legal team is doing what it has to do. And they came up with this thing that let's start a letter writing campaign. And then it sort of just caught on because the moment they put that out, friends, family. How many, how many days into jail were you when they started writing? I got my first letter because I used to date every letter. Right. So I got my first letter from Sonbhadra, uh -huh. finger stamped by Rajkumari and Sukali Didi, a long letter in Hindi on 27th of July. Okay. And I was put in judicial custody on 3rd of July. Okay. It took some 21 days. Yeah, maybe. because you know, by the time the whole thing, it takes a lot of time. Yeah. Each one comes with a censored stamp. But you get it finally. <laughs> right, right. No, but that I, 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 I've been telling people ever since I was released that uh, this uh, writing letters to political prisoners is very important. should be part of our political action. Mm. Because uh, there's so many in Orissa, Jharkhand, Adivasi activists, Chhattisgarh. A letter means a lot. It's like a connection to the outside world. So, you know, Tista, uh, uh, of course, this is something, of course, you know, I have known you uh, since the late 1980s when both of us were journalists. Uh, and when you started communism combat in 1993, saying that mainstream journalism is, uh, is passe, it's over. Uh, and of course, I was part of the mainstream journalism for very many years after that. But then now I have also been trying to set up an alternative media portal in the item. But uh, looking back, I, I think your journey has been uh, uh, very rigorous. It's been very exciting. It's also been very strenuous. What made you take that decision in 1993? 
you know it, it was a lot it first of all it was a collective decision it was both javed anand and my decision it was not a lo- alone decision it came out of a deep sense of frustration and anger about what was happening and that time of course i must admit that we was looking at it from the prism of communal and secular you know minority majority because that was the vision that uh, you know we we had at that time and we really felt i mean javed was deputy editor sunday observer i was senior special correspondent business india both about the same time in journalism he was about 2 years senior and we just seen what happened to our country and mobilization that was happening from about 85 86 onwards first with the vhp rss and then bjp around the ram mandir agitation how polarizing it was getting how it was entering living rooms and classrooms and drawing rooms legitimization of the hate and then of course the counter mobilization from the minority after the shah banu judgment and these feeding into each other to kind of narrow down the debate narrow down the debate and the space yeah. for any rationality so i remember many of us sainath even sudindra at that time kulkarni yeah. was a colleague of javed you know setting up this thing called journalists against communalism yeah when extremely inflammatory writings in print media yeah and today yeah, we didn't have much television at the time and today it's much more toxic you yeah. know yeah. so somehow one got the feeling that the build up to communal violence and the follow out is not something journalists are allowed to explore enough that was the raison d'etre of communalism combat that the riot in the mind festers for many many years and months before it spills into blood on the streets it's through the history we are taught through the perspectives we are brought up with through the media we consume all of this so can we not do something to examine processes that was the idea so after that of course you know <coughs> you this uh, adivasi thing of course you know uh, i did not know put in this much detail i knew that you were part of the organization but then it's actually a grassroots organization which they have co-opted you as some kind of patrons or kind of you know no actually it's a it's a two way association i must say you know yeah. it's it, it's not that i feel for me it was a recognition that if you have to understand uh, deepening of democracy then you have to understand it through association of various kinds of marginalized sections okay number one number two that the battle for land and resources is as crucial as the battle for civil rights and political rights you know and because eventually the buck is going to stop there right if you look at the way the new liberal paradigm is going etc and history which is a passion for me and i think for you also in terms of whose history are we teaching whose history are we recording and there's a history of vast section of our people that we have not even begun recording absolutely and i think that was it keeps saying we were in democracy in the making so i mean for instance my learning through this uh, through the akhil bharatiya jan uh, jan sangathan the union akhil bharatiya jan shamjeevi union is called all india union of forest working people is that for almost 80 to 100 years before 1847 which we see as the f- first war of independence and all that you already had at least 70 to 80 challenges to colonial rule mm. happening in the small agrarian uh, sections and the adivasi yeah. because their resources and the access was being looted which urban india saw much later yeah. which the maharajas and the this uh, maulana saw later yeah. so this understanding also has informed my politics that much as you consider yourself progressive there's still so much to learn right so how, when you look back from the communalism combat days to adivasi and to this jail diary when you look back is it possible for you to sum up your journey in say two or three sentences i know it's a tough ask no i think it's it's for me it's a personal journey to understand the various oppressive structures of indian society okay and therefore the possibilities of liberties and emancipation i remember one huge debate my having with javed you know saying that when we looking at communism combat we have to look at caste and when i told him this to 1999 or 2000 he was not so exposed to the whole dalit politics and all that and i and i said no unless we understand caste oppression we will not be able to really deconstruct communalism that was also something the magazine grew with and combat was the first to give space to dalit english writers who were then picked up by mainstream right. you know as as big names and we are very proud of it right. 
activists started writing for us, then they got picked up by the mainstream because that was our job. Yeah, I remember Kanshiram once asked me when, then of course, the journalist had got into his bedroom and then he had a problem and he used to speak to me in Tamil. Oh. Because, yeah, yeah, he was very active in Tamil Nadu. My God. So, so he used to ask me to tell me how many accredited journalists are there in this country. And I think you know, that was the time when Communism Combat was giving space to these yeah. people. Yeah. yeah, and all of them later on started getting columns in Express, Pioneer, uh, you know, uh, many of the newspapers and this thing, because they got a visibility in, in a section of, because unfortunately, David and I only write and read in English. I mean, we were English journalists, mm. but we tried to break that uh, uh, structural uh, exclusion by ensuring that whoever wrote for us, we made their copy editable and readable in English. Right. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, as my, our viewers must be knowing, uh, uh, we can't really get into the details of the cases that uh, Tista is uh, having at this point of time, because, you know, that will be sub judice, obviously, obviously, and of course, you know, uh, it may not be in the right moment. Of course, we'll, we'll come to that. So, uh, that is why we are discussing about uh, Tista's organizational journey and the way it has come up. And of course, this jail diary is going to be a very important milestone in, again in her uh, journalistic work. Uh, but Tista, recently uh, you said that you've been, you've been, your understanding of politics has become much more diverse than what it was in the late 80s and early 90s. And this Adivasi, uh, ex this, this engagement with the Adivasi organization is also. And recently you were in Kerala uh, for the All India Democratic Women's Association. And of course, you know, that's again uh, another part of the left. It's a mainstream left. Uh, how do you look at that engagement? See, I have uh, the advantage of not being in part of any party structure, right? So, I, but I still consider my friend, consider myself a friend of progressive politics. So, be it Dalit organizations or Adivasi organizations or uh, the organized left parties, there has always been that association. Uh, which doesn't mean that one doesn't ask certain questions either. You know, questions like, for instance, that bother you deeply, say about patriarchy patriarchy within uh, the structure uh, structure within the structure itself within kerala society is 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 the is, is kerala politics which has voted the left to power so many times uh, and and twice in succession this time which has successfully tackled the covid pandemic and the floods is it looking enough at at socially diverse questions like culture uh, uh, intersectorality between minorities women caste, Adivasis within Kerala, migrant workers. I mean, these are questions I think we should healthily need to ask only because we wanted a better spaces in Kerala, not because we don't respect the spaces we have, but to make them better. So it's that kind of a deep association. I was extremely proud that, I mean, of course, being Edwa was an electrifying experience, but they were kind enough to give me uh, a space as a symbol of resistance. But the other four women were more inspiring than I could ever be. There was a woman who was from Fulwara, Bengal, been jailed for 10 years, 8 years. There's a Dalit, uh, uh, now an elected panchayat leader from Tamil Nadu, who's taken up the case of the custodial death of her own husband. Right. I mean, so if, if Edwa can throw up such women, there is something really going for that organization. Yeah. Now we wait for that to come up to the leadership, yeah. you know, and that is what we are waiting for. And it will happen. If, if the debates continue, I'm sure it will happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, uh, the, I was reading the reports of the uh, conference and I, I'm told that, you know, that the AIDWA membership has crossed the one crore. One crore, yeah. Is, of course, yeah. So, I think it's important for an organization in India with such vibrant potential to realize that, yes, it is aligned to the party, but that it should not be a, become a party adjunct, you know, that issues of gender, issues of access to hunger, education, which are essentially women's concerns, should remain core, like, like they showed. Haryana, the two women who were felicitated. On Anganwadis, they took out marches, you know, the right to kind of childcare. And they took on a patriarchal structure in Haryana. You know? And not only did they do that, but they took off their own gungat and women of the village's gungat. Right. So these transformations are happening. It's just that we want them to happen more and more and also manifest themselves in party structures. Right, right. Anyway, I think uh, what you said is very important that dialogue uh, <laughs> across, uh, you know, your, your, your limited structures and perhaps across uh, your political perceptions and even ideologies uh, is very important to understand politics and take progressive politics in the contemporary times. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, uh, there have been several factors which have limited 
this conversation, we have not got into real politics, we have not looked at Gujarat, we have not looked at uh, your cases. Of course, you know, uh, it's again a part of uh, a dialogue that we need to continue with the item. And thank you very much, uh, Tista, for spending this time with us. Uh, we look forward to having you more often in the item. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Venkatesh. And all the best to item, yeah? All the best. Yeah.